So you go into the chemical storeroom and you grab a stock bottle of sodium hydroxide and you notice there's no concentration listed on it. Oh my goodness, what are we going to do? When you run an experiment, you kind of need to know what the concentration of your uh, solution is. So what you need to do is figure out a way to determine what the concentration of this NaOH is. Now fortunately, it is NaOH, which makes it a base. So how do you figure out the concentration of a base is? Well, neutralize it with an acid whose concentration you know. This is 0 0.1000 molar HCl, hydrochloric acid. I know because I made it myself. It's good stuff, really. So what we're going to do is we're going to neutralize the acid and the base. We're going to figure out how much base does it take to neutralize a certain volume of the acid. We're going to use the titration equation. Number of H's MAVA equals number of OH's MUBVA. Now, hydrochloric acid has one H in the formula. Sodium hydroxide has one OH in the formula, so that's easy enough. And we know the molarity of the acid, MA, that's uh, 0 0.100 molar. We don't know MUB though, that's what we're trying to find out. We're trying to figure out MUB. So what we do is we find out the volume of acid, VA, and the volume of base, VUB, and then just simply solve for MUB. We're going to do this with a process called titration. You see what happens is when you react an acid with a base, the hydrogen ion from the acid and the hydroxide ion from the base combine to form a molecule of water. Meanwhile, the other ions combine to form a substance known as a salt. If the number of moles of hydrogen ions and the number of moles of hydroxide ions are equal, the solution is going to neutralize itself to a nice neutral pH of 7. In this particular lab, we're trying to find out what the molarity of the base is. So to figure that out, we're going to divide both sides by the other stuff. Number of OHs, VUB. Number of OHs, VUB. Since the number of hydrogens and hydroxides are the same, they just simply cancel out. We don't have to worry about them. We know the molarity of the acid is 0 0.100 molar. So all you got to do is find out the volume of the acid and the volume of the base that it's going to take to neutralize that acid. Once you got that information, you just can plug it in and that'll tell you the molarity of the base. Nice and simple. Except in this lab, you guys are going to do four trials. You're going to run the experiment four times and then average the four results. That'll give us our most accurate results. The equipment you need to make this lab work are two beakers, one labeled A for acid, the other labeled B for base, two acid-base burettes, one of them labeled A for acid, the other one labeled B for base, two funnels, one of them labeled A for acid, the other one labeled B for base, a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, a white piece of paper to improve contrast when you put it on the ring stand, and a black piece of paper to help improve contrast when you read the numbers off of the burette. Without the black piece of paper, with the black piece of paper. Look at that incredible difference. First step, measure out 60 milliliters of the acid and the base, making sure to cap the container after you measure it out. Make sure that both valves on your burettes are in the closed position and then place the burette assembly on the ground. Lift the funnel up and then pour in the acid and base in their respective burettes until the level is between zero and the top. Between zero and the top. Perfect. The first thing you need to do is get the air bubbles out of the tips. Tap out the air bubbles and continue draining until the level of the base is at zero milliliters. Drain out the acid until you have exactly 10 milliliters of acid. And now add three drops of phenolphthalein to your acid. Mm -hmm. Place a white piece of paper underneath the base burette. Place the acid flask underneath and start adding your base. Oh, and then we have to like mix it and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And we're waiting for it to be there for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Now there's still a higher concentration of acid than base, which is why the pink color disappears. 
but as you add more bass and the pH rises closer to neutral, the pink color hangs out a little longer. So you add a little less each time. If you add too much bass, you can go back and clear it up with a drop of acid, and then when you go back to add bass again, just use shorter skiz maneuvers. <laughs> Wait, stir it. Now that you've got it cleared back up again, put it back underneath the base and just add less base. Perfect, that was one drop. Now that you've got the correct color, you know your solution has been neutralized. So now you're going to use the black piece of paper and you're going to hold it up so that you can more <laughs> easily read the level of the liquid in the burette. And then record your data for trial one. And this is the perfect shade of pink that you should get after titrating. Now remember, phenolphthalein doesn't start turning color until a pH of 8.2. So what you have in here is not a neutral solution, but the difference in volume between a pH of 8.2 and a pH of 7 is so tiny that it works. Now that you've finished your first trial, you can take the flask, dump it in the sink, and give it a good rinsing. Your final volume of trial one becomes the initial volume of trial two. And then you will repeat the process, putting in another fresh 10 milliliters of acid into the flask. So your final volume was 10.10 milliliters. You'll drain it out until it reads 20.10 milliliters. And then repeat the process until you have data for four trials. And the data gradually builds up. You'll find that as you do it more and more, your technique will continue to improve. Once you've poured the results of your last trial down the drain, and given everything a good washing. Your first step is to remove the funnels from the top of the burette and wash it out. Next, take the burettes and tilt it down into the sink to drain it out, opening up the other side to let it flow more freely. Then, close the valve, turn it right side up, Open the vent once more and add distilled water to the top as you rotate the burette to clean out all sides. Eventually enough pressure will build up that the water will rinse out the tip. This is especially important with the base as the base, when the water evaporates, will congeal, will precipitate out and could seal the tip of the burette. And now what you'll do is close the valve, close the valve, and then turn it upside down, turn it upside down, and dump out the distilled water. Repeat the process with the other burette. Reinsert the funnels once both burettes have been cleaned, and then place all equipment back along the side of the room where you found it. Perfect.